Hello, hi everyone. It is so good to be here. It is real nice to be spending this time with everyone. My name is Gabriel and very quickly I will be taking you through a practical session on just how uh, to apply this knowledge that you have just gained. Thanks to Jerry for his session on uh, how, how to how to get joint values, what joint values are, what their importance are, uh, how to get the data, how to organize the data. I will pick up from there and we will actually be creating a rose diagram or a rose plot from scratch with uh, some joint values that I have prepared. Now I will try to make this as easy as possible because actually it's really easy. It's really, really easy. Uh, so I'll try to keep it simple and yeah, hopefully we will leave here with um, a load of information. Not just any information, but information that will be beneficial to us all. Here I just have uh, a quick rundown of a few things. Uh, why, what joint values are used for, uh, why geologists collect joint values. Jerry has already taking us through a session on that, but this is just some extra notes. I think uh, we will make this small file available so you can just read through. What we are interested in uh, is this table here where I have some joint values that we will be using. And then right here on the other side of my screen, what I just did here is to split my screen into two. I have uh, a Word file here and I have the software here. The name of the software is GeoRose, as you can see here. In my research, in all my research to find software to create rose diagrams, this has been the easiest I have found. It's very easy. It is very, very straightforward. You need very, very little... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? You don't need a lot of complex computer knowledge because the software interface is as easy as it can be you simply impute your joint values remember joint values are also called strike values you just impute your strike values right here and your diagram appears right immediately immediately you put a value it starts to create your diagram here it does not get as simple as that there are other software that creates rose diagrams that you can use to create rose diagrams and rose plots but this is the easiest i have found like i said uh, you can use rockworks uh, to create rose diagrams though that's a bit more complex but you still end up having uh, your rose diagram there are others there are others you can even use graphic design software such as photoshop illustrator corel draw uh, and you still arrive you still get your rose plot if you know how to use those software but i'm trying to keep it simple so what best to use than the simplest software I have found? So, without wasting much of your time with long stories, long stories, let's get right into the plot. Okay, so like I said, all we are going to do is to impute strike values. Now, you can impute your strike values in two ways. You can either type them out manually, or if you have a table, this is a table... This is a table with rows and columns. If you have a table, you can just copy individual rows and then you paste. Okay, so if your, if your data, if your joint data is arranged on a table like this, then wonderful. Otherwise, you can just do this. Let's assume our first strike value is 20. Just type in 20 and then press enter. And right, remember I said our diagram appears immediately. So you see your diagram appearing right here. Once you press enter, it creates the second row. And then you can type in another joint value. Let's say 120, press enter, then go down, type the next one. You can see when I typed 120, it changed it to 300. Now, don't worry when this happens, because if you look here, you'll see 120 falls on the same line as 300. So it's just how the software is set up. So you can impute a value and then you see the value change to another value. Don't worry, it's still the same value. It's just reading them from two different halves 
of your circle okay so don't bother don't uh, let that trouble you so let's continue i'll type in 80 you see something else appears what if i type in 28 you see my diagram changes so the diagram updates in real time as you type in your strike values okay but manually typing my strike values i have more than 500 values here manually typing in 500 values will take us uh, a long time so it would be best if you have your values on the table like this because let me just get rid of this because you can easily copy and paste okay so let's i'll select the first column i'll copy and then i paste and you see it pasted all the values on this column for me easy this is something that would have taken us long to type in okay so i can do the same for this column you remember if you don't have your values on a table you can simply type by type them out manually just as i showed you previously so let's copy the second column then click where it ends and then paste and you see your diagram updating so right now we have pasted 72 values let's copy another column i'd like us to have um, a minimum of 200 or more joint values if you want your rows diagram to be accurate to be detailed then you will need a lot of joint values i would say use nothing less than a hundred values when you are creating a rows diagram nothing less than a hundred values remember i said right here i used this data for a project i have more than 500 values here or maybe 500 on the dot but i have a lot of values here so i would suggest you use you get when you're on the field collect as much strike data joint values as you can the more the better the more the better okay that cannot be over emphasized so uh let's continue i'll paste this here you can see my diagram being updated in real time that is one thing i love about this software you see how your diagram is progressing right as you're imputing your strike values sorry if there's some background noise coming through it's uh it's a bit noisy outside but i hope you can hear me clearly okay so all i'm doing is i'm just copying and pasting joint values see we have pasted up to 288 imagine having to type all these things into the software it's going to be crazy it's going to take up a lot of time so i'll just keep pasting uh, i'll just paste everything i have here like i said we'll try to make this file this word document available just in case you want to use uh, these same values and maybe do some practice or feel free to use your own values if you have them i'm sure if you are a geology student who has gone through field work then you should have joint values okay like i said i have more than 500 values here so i have a total of 540 joint values and you can see what i have right here okay so since we are done copying and pasting values i can just uh, make this bigger so we can see our diagram properly now i have some settings i have already tampered with some settings so yours might not look exactly as mine does but don't worry i'll walk you through uh, the settings and how you can adjust some things here okay so we have all our joint values arranged on the strike column the only thing we are working with is the strike column okay so you can see how they are arranged now one of the importance of uh, one of the significance of constructing a rose plot is that it helps you organize we have 540 values here but right here it's very very easy to visualize and we can see that values between 0 degrees and 30 degrees are more because we can see the frequency we have more of them this is next so it's very very easy if i just look at the table of course i will not be able to figure out okay 
what range do I have um, who con has the most frequency? Of course, you do that on your frequency table and you see, but this gives you a very, very nice um, picture representation of what you're dealing with. So it's, it's also nice to look at. If you look at the Word document, you'll see uh, other things on the importance of rows diagram so to make adjustments to this we just click right here to configure our diagram i'll move this here if you want a background you can give it a background uh let's see okay let's leave this now for background let's say we select another background you see it changes so this is just you making small changes i'll take it back because I like this. Uh, one thing with graphical re representations is that you want to have colors that contrast. Colors that contrast. If our petals, these are called petals. If our petals are blue, then we would not want to have blue as a background because they will not contrast because they will just blend together and it will make it hard to visualize. When you have white here, you have black here, they contrast so much. When maybe you have uh, white here, you have red here, or you have red here, you have white here. They contrast a lot. So um, this, this will just be a quick lesson on your color theory. Let me see. Uh, okay. So I just changed the background. Um, what else? I can change the fill also. Let me make you white. You can see these two colors contrast. You can still make out your diagrams perfectly. Okay, I'll change the background to something I like. My favorite color is blue, so I'll just use, I'll make this blue and make this white. This is just me playing around, of course. You can do whatever you feel like doing. If you want an outline, you can put an outline. Let me make my outline black. Uh, okay, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. Let me see. I want my feel to be white. outline okay somehow the outline is up is affecting the feel but no worries i'll just make the feel white and just let it be like this now let me see uh there's something i'm looking for circle text that's this text right here circle text it's gray and it's blending a bit with the white so i want it to be black so it's more readable you can see it's bolder okay now direction text those these ones they are already visible i can leave them as they are now let me see if i don't want a full circle i can uncheck this and i have a half circle it still gives me uh, the information just that it's not a full circle of course it's a half circle but this can still work, though most persons use full circles and I would advise you stick to the full circles. You can change the intervals of your diagram. You know, they are 30, 30, 30, which is optimal. You can change them if you feel like, uh, but I'll suggest you just leave them like this. So once you're done, you save. Just save as default, so it always uh, keeps it just as you want, and then you can close this. So right here we have our rules diagram ready 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 to use i'll just change the background to white just something i'm better something i like better maybe make this black okay this is very visible well uh, maybe it looks weird let's make this blue okay i like this so that's just to show you that you can mess around with the options as much as you want and get the diagram. I think one thing, one disadvantage that I have noticed with uh, geo rows is that I cannot change the individual colors of the petals and make them unique. All the petals are one color, but then it's a very small software, so definitely we cannot have everything we want. Um, okay, so that's one thing. Some persons may tell you they want the petals to be different colors. It looks better that way. But then, essentially, all you need a rose diagram to 
do is to interpret data and this does it perfectly so yeah once you're done you can save you can come to file uh, export so let's export this diagram uh, let me export it well let me see where should I export let me export it to C and then I can just call it rows diagram and then I save okay I don't have permission yeah let's save in pictures folder instead C is a system file it's a system drive so yeah that's to be expected so I'll just save in pictures and then I can open file explorer go to pictures and right there is our rose diagram done and done you can use it for your reports for your projects whatever purpose you need it for okay it wasn't that simple that was simple that was straightforward and i hope um i have not gotten you confused uh i tried to make sure that i found it very very easy software because some of them can be very complex uh so this is pretty straightforward i hope you have gotten some value for this again again thanks to jerry thanks to geotech for all for this initiative i think it's amazing that they're trying to get people to learn these things uh as a geologist let me just end on this note as a geologist you need you need you need to stand out you need to stand out you cannot just have book knowledge you need to stand out and what will make you stand out one of the main things that will make you stand out is how well you can apply that knowledge that you have gotten in your lecture classrooms that knowledge you have gotten from textbooks how well can you apply it to real life to solve problems that is what makes you stand out uh, you can go for an interview and then you see somebody who is way smarter than you. But then he has the knowledge. He does not know how to apply the knowledge. Trust me, trust me, no company is going to employ that kind of a person. But when you show them that you can solve problems, what people want, people want other people that can solve problems. If I have a company today, I want employees or I want colleagues that can solve problems because that is what makes you relevant. You solve a problem. You solve a problem. If you look at people who are doing their masters, their PhDs, their thesis solves a problem. It solves a problem because that is basically what what people live for. You get that is what makes you stand out as a geologist. There are lots of geology students out there. There are lots of graduates out there, but let me not make noise let me not make so much noise you just need to stand out so find one of these software learn uh, i implore you to stick to geotech for all there are a lot of wonderful things that are coming your way that will prepare you for life after the four corners life outside the four corners of an educational institute of a university of a monotechnic of a polytechnic wherever you may find yourselves you need you need to be different you can't keep recycling same old same old make yourself relevant and watch people struggle to have you work with them work for them whatever so guys uh, thank you so much for spending this time with me my name is gabriel once again and uh, i hope you have a wonderful day thank you so much